Uh, there's so many that I could uh, fill a book full of uh, funny stories uh, from delivering cars to Elton John when I was uh, 19 to, um, to being uh, very proud to win the first Bathurst um, that, that Triple Eight <clears throat> put together in um, 2006. There's an awful lot of moments. I, I, I can't even begin to um, get close to trying to work out which are the which are the real highlights but in certainly in Australia um, the the six Bathurst wins that we've had have been uh, very 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 special because it's a place that uh, I was very aware of as a kid in Ireland um, right back in the in the 60s yeah I mean it was a the Briggs Motorsport operation was a um, yeah, mid-range team, as it were, that ha hadn't won. It wasn't terrible, um, but it was a very good collection of people, and it was really a matter of taking those people, uh, enhancing the workforce, uh, adding to it, but really building on the people that that um, I inherited, and uh, and getting the best out of them. And um, I'd like to think that that's <clears throat> the major contribution that I make is trying to get the best out of, uh, out of a eclectic group um, with many different skills and backgrounds. Um, and that's what I saw back in 2003, the roots of that at, um, at Briggs Motorsport, uh, and um, really, really, built on, uh, really built on that. And it took us 18 months or so to shape it into something that was capable of winning. And we won our first, uh, first race May 05. Um, and yeah, I haven't looked back. Yeah, I, I reckon that the <clears throat> looking after the people, um, first and foremost, to try to get the best out of them is the uh, is the most important contribution I can make. So uh, clearly, having a, a commercial ability, as well as understanding racing and what makes a difference and what doesn't make a difference, that's, that's vital, but trying to get and extract from a group of uh, individuals uh, the best out of them, keep a, a very family orientated atmosphere in the team, make people want to be there, want to come to work every day and want to win at not any cost, but almost any cost, they want to win. They've got to be committed to winning and it's trying to give them the tools to do that as well as give them the mental um, space to be able to do it and the, the right attitude. Yeah, it's an interesting one in, in motorsport. It's an interesting one in lots of sports. I mean, football, you can have... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a massive soccer fan and um, there are some individuals in the world who are bigger than the teams almost that they play for. Uh, we've got, at the moment, three uh, very uh, talented um, drivers, two of which are the two most successful drivers in the history of the sport in terms of race wins in Australia. Um, and uh, I'm very, very pleased that all of them have shown me that they've been capable of being team players. So understanding that we are a team, they can't win without the team. Um, the team, obviously, we can't win without them. Uh, we have to go hand in hand and there will be times when it doesn't go their way as an individual. But they all seem to understand pretty well and certainly Craig and Jamie have over a decade, um, understood that big picture means team, and uh, without the team, they, they don't they don't exist. Uh, at, at different times, we've looked for different things. I mean, when um, back in '04, when first did a deal with Craig, that was about trying to get a driver who we knew was an absolute benchmark. 
um, in terms of performance, so that if we weren't winning, it wasn't the driver, it was us as a team. So we, we had to have a known quantity. And, and I went after the best known quantity that there was. Um, and uh, in my mind, there were, at that time, there were three outstanding drivers in the category. It was Craig, there was Marcus Ambrose, and there was Mark Scaife. And um, I had to have one of them, and Craig was the one that um, we were fortunate enough to be able to convince to come and join us. Um, so, and then with Jamie, it was more a question of, to be honest, trying to find somebody who could be a part of a winning team at Bathurst. That's what I wanted to do. And uh, Jamie was hungry, young, wasn't interested in the money at that time. He's more interested in it now. Mm -hmm. But uh, wasn't interested in the money at the time, just wanted to get his bum in the best car he could. And um, we saw it as an opportunity to mold uh, driver pairing for the enduro races, and in particular, the Bathurst 1000. Um, with Shane, we've got to know him over the last few years because we've worked with Techno, who ran him uh, for three years um, in a 888 built car. So got to know him very well and um, his ability. So his ability is right up there. He's got great natural talent um, and uh, needed a bit of, of refining when he first went to Techno, but Steve Hallam, who used to run that team, did a very good job with, um, uh, with Shane in terms of, uh, of uh, making him a more rounded competitor. Um, but we all just love the fact that he just wants to drive cars, just wants to drive race cars, drift cars, whatever. Um, and that enthusiasm is, uh, is infectious. Um, look, sometimes when you get back into one of our cars, into a supercar after you've done an event in a GT3 car, it can actually be a disadvantage for half an hour. First practice session, for instance, because you're still getting back used to the car, which steering wheel could be on the other side, for instance, the, uh, it hasn't got ABS, hasn't got traction control. Um, so it can be a short-term disadvantage, but over the course of a season, I think it, um, it's an advantage for him. Whether it would be for everyone, I don't know, but an advantage for him to be driving um, other cars because that's what he loves doing. He wants to drive cool cars in cool places around the world and um, and good luck to him he's a archetypal um, Kiwi racing driver making the most of his opportunities um, I'd like to think that uh, at the end of the day I set out a commercial framework um, <coughs> try and look after the people that I employ as well as I can and give them overall direction and um, delegate properly, whilst also having a, I hope, a pretty good bullshit detector. Mm -hmm. And motorsport is, is full of bullshit, uh, and um, it's being able to wade through that and understand uh, what makes a difference and what doesn't. And in, in building a motorsport team, there isn't a team in the world that can do every single thing it would like to do in terms of going after performance or et cetera. So you're always deciding what's important and what's less important and prioritizing things. <laughs> um, and that's a part of what I do as well. It, it, it's, uh, it's good. I almost wish I'd done it earlier, um, but <laughs> you know, it, um, it uh, is interesting for me because um, my grandfather was uh, born in Adelaide, 1892, um, ended up in the UK, uh, World War I, and stayed there, uh, and still visited Australia, but <laughs> um, my elder brother is a doctor in the Northern Territory. Connections with Australia go back a long way. Um, so it's sort of... Um, uh, come full circle, and um, yeah, from my great grandfather um, coming out under his own power, not uh, not under sufferance, in um, in the 1870s 
uh, to um, South Australia uh, as a settler. And um, funnily enough, I've still got the, the Bible that he brought with him that's been backwards and forwards between uh, Australia and the UK. I can't say I read it that often, but I like having it. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not sure you'd have to ask um, some of the layabouts that I hang around with. Um, trying, to, uh, trying to make the most of, um, of uh, life in general and, <clears throat> and these days living in a, um, a country where I believe we're all fundamentally spoiled to be here. Yeah, we're privileged to be here um, in this country. Uh, we should remember that but at the same time have a good time. Um, I love sailing. I um, can't do enough of it at the moment, if, uh, but I uh, keep a, um, a racing boat in, um, in Thailand so that I can do South East Asian regattas. Uh, that's uh, um, an escape route for me. Um, but, uh, but equally, um, I, can, I can never get enough motorsport one way or the other. Uh, and um, I'm very happy to, to watch other people doing a good job as well. Look, we all need modern cars because at the end of the day they work properly, the aircon works, mm -hmm. they, they start, they stop and everything, etc. So, um, yeah, I drive uh, uh, three different cars at the moment as, a, as modern cars. Uh, you've got a, um, an SS Commodore manual um, V8, which um, which I love, apart from the fact that if I drove it properly, I'd get nicked all the time. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but it's the best it's the best Commodore that's ever been built, um, and uh, it's great fun. I've got a, a Range Rover SVR as well, and I've got a, a Golf um, GTI Club Sport that's just come. So um, I like uh, I like them, but I don't love them. The classic cars. Um, I absolutely adore classic cars as long as I don't have to drive them too much. Um, but I've got, <coughs> in Australia, I've only got um, two classics. I've got another fun thing. I've got a uh, 67 Camaro race car that's right-hand drive, the only one in the world, um, that was built 25 years ago in the UK by Andy Rouse. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, who was a, a touring car legend in the UK. Um, he built it early 90s. I've got that car here, which I just take out on track days, have fun, etc. with it. Um, 630 horsepower um, and uh, sideways everywhere. I've got a 67 Pontiac Parisienne convertible, right -hand, original right-hand drive from the factory in Canada. Um, that's a Gold Coast special, really. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's white, nice. it's white and red. It's uh, it's immaculate, um, tasteless and uh, funny. Yeah. Um, and I've got a, a two door, I think it's a '99 WRX STI okay. um, Subaru with um, uh, lowered and um, fancy suspension and f fancy ECU and exhaust and brakes and everything. Uh, which is a giggle for taking out on track days. It's so light and such fun um, that it's actually quite a good balance between um, old and modern. You know, it still drives really well, and it's a, um, if I allow friends to drive it at, at Norwell or something on the Gold Coast, I can't get them out of it. I have to say, I, I love it. I could come and camp and... Uh, uh, walk around um, remembering over um, 30 years of working for myself uh, but also you know, 40 years of working um, how many of those cars that you've got of the older cars that you've got here whether racing or road going how many stories I've got of <laughs> myself of you know, owning <coughs> owning those cars or uh, selling those cars or knowing people who had them or dreaming over you know, Lamborghini Miuras in the 60s um, as the best looking car there's ever been. Um, terrible to drive, absolute <laughs> dog to drive, but sensational looking um, to 
uh, yeah, Mercedes 280 SE 3.5s, I'm a massive fan of. Um, I've owned a couple, sold them in hindsight far too cheaply, but it was good at the time. Um, I actually like the hard top ones. Uh, the um, uh, yeah, F40, I, I own two F40s myself personally, uh, back in the early 90s. Um, and uh, not the greatest car to, to drive, but just a sensational car to look at. And to, um, yeah, in those days, getting into something with just surrounded by carbon fiber was pretty special. And uh, it was an iconic car at the time. Um, so a whole host of memories coming out from looking at these cars. Uh, it's a real, real buzz. Um, I've, I enjoyed spending two hours just trawling through and looking at, um, at some of the things. And also with, uh, with um, a staff that actually know what they're talking about because uh, it's fun to talk to people who know as much about the cars as, as I think I do and et cetera. And, and, and in some cases, a lot more than I do uh, with some of the cars. And that's really, uh, that's uh, fun, real good fun.